Welcome back to Short Times. The Best of Me is a 2014 American romantic drama film directed by Michael Hoffman and written by Will Fetters and J. Mills Goodlow, based on Nicholas Sparks' 2011 novel of the same name. The movie begins with Dawson Cole. Dawson Cole is an oil rig worker off the coast of Louisiana. An explosion on the site nearly kills him one day, hurling him into the water but he miraculously lives. After recovering for several months, Dawson hears that his close friend and surrogate father, Tuck Hostetler, has died, and he goes home for the first time in nearly 20 years to carry out Tuck's final wishes. When he gets to his residence, Dawson is shocked to learn that Tuck has also arranged for Dawson's high school girlfriend, Amanda Collier, to join him. Tuck's goal appears to have been for Dawson and Amanda to restart their past romance. Amanda, on the other hand, is now married. Later the film is taken back to 1992, when Dawson was born into a renowned backwoods crime family with an abusive father. Later as an adolescent, it is revealed that his cousin Bobby and his girlfriend April were going to be adolescent parents. One day, April's car breaks down as they leave the restaurant. Dawson gets out of the car and asks her to put the car in neutral. While he goes to seek help, he then asks the folks in the car behind him whether they want to assist push or simply tow, to which they respond with a honk. However, Amanda, who was in that car, realized that her buddies were being jerks, and chose to go support Dawson. When they get the car parked on the side of the road, Amanda offers to contact a tow truck, but Dawson declines, claiming that he can fix it. Following day Dawson notices Amanda in her car with the front door open during school. He comes over to investigate what's going on, and quickly discovers that the problem is a disconnected battery. At the same time Amanda invites him out on a date, and he accepts. Later on that day Dawson's father is upset since he didn't say hello when he went in, so he says hello grudgingly. When he is not satisfied, his father threatens to beat him. He left his father's house and spent the night in Tuck Hostetler's garage, since he didn't feel appreciated. Tuck, a local mechanic who recently lost his wife, lets Dawson live with him, and eventually accepts him as his own kid. Dawson, on the other hand, did not appear at Amanda's dinner the following evening. Amanda, furious, goes to see Dawson and discovers him working on a car. He then tells her that he didn't want to go out in public, because he had gotten a black eye earlier that day. Amanda responds by telling him to take her somewhere private. So they head to a nearby water tower. Amanda tells Dawson about her future goals, which include attending Tulane University and working for a nonprofit. The two begin dating and quickly fall in love. After a few days, Dawson's father and brothers beat up Tuck on the day of the prom. Dawson, enraged, goes to his father's house, intending to shoot him with Tuck's rifle. However, Bobby is murdered by accident during the fight. Dawson swears against his father and brothers in exchange for a shorter sentence. Dawson, however, cuts ties with Amanda, because he will not be released for another four years, forcing her to pick college over sticking with him. The scene shifts to after Tuck's death. Tuck's lawyer informs Amanda and Dawson that Tuck has left them the cottage he and his wife used to reside in, and that they are supposed to spread Tuck's ashes there. Things start off difficult, with Amanda and Dawson keeping their distance for Tuck's welfare. When Dawson comes upon a photograph of Tuck, Amanda, and her kid, Amanda begins to open up about what has happened over the last two decades. She informs him that she attended Tulane University as planned, but became pregnant unexpectedly. Afterward, she got married to a guy named Frank and had two children, Jared and B. She also tells Dawson that B had just turned two in that photo had been diagnosed with leukemia a few weeks later and passed away. Dawson hugs and consoles her, saying he can't imagine what it's like. Dawson and Amanda afterwards had a romantic night together. Amanda asks him during dinner if he has ever been in a relationship or loved anyone. Dawson said that she had set a rather high standard. Amanda then feels terrible and touched because she is the only one he has truly loved. While walking to the car, Amanda explains that she purposefully removed the battery in order for him to save her in her school days. Dawson, on the other hand, had known all along that this was the situation, and Amanda asks why he didn't tell her, to which Dawson responds, when was a mechanic ever the hero of the story? Amanda then enters and kisses him. The next day, they ride in Dawson's stick shift car, and Dawson shows Amanda how to drive it. They then return to the cottage and spread Tuck's ashes. They settle down at the boat dock to discuss their plans, and Amanda tells Dawson that she has been coming every day for a month and every week for a year to the prisons to see him. Dawson tells her that he knew about every time she came, and she becomes enraged and storms away. Dawson, pleading for her to listen, 
says that he only did that to alleviate some of the pain. Amanda then says that he didn't take away any of the pain, and confesses that she would have waited as long as it took. She then says, knowing full well how wrong it was, that when Jared was born she wanted to tell him, and when B died of leukemia, she wanted him to hold her, and Dawson does just that she disliked him for it, because she would have done anything for him, and he had taken away that option from her. They kiss and make up after he admits he was wrong. Later that day, while sitting by the fire, Amanda and Dawson reminisce about their song Sweet Jamie, and Amanda tells Dawson that she has always trusted for everything to work out, but she no longer does. Dawson then gets up and, much to Amanda's surprise, goes to his car and plays the same song. The two then dance, and Amanda complains that he isn't stomping on her toes, to which Dawson responds that he hasn't yet. They had sex after that and are both overjoyed. They are both reminded of former times the next day by a rose in a bottle. They both jump into a neighboring lake afterwards, and Amanda sleeps on her back as Dawson supports her. Then, while sitting outside admiring the garden, Amanda receives a phone call from her son Jared, who inquires as to how things are going, and when she will return. She claims she'll call again in a few days, and then hangs up. Dawson then tells Amanda that she should honor her family responsibilities, and that he loves her even more for it. Amanda is aware that she should, but she is unsure how to say goodbye. Dawson's promises to be there for her and to always love her. She then decides to return to her family and her difficult marriage, in order to fulfill her family obligations. Dawson stays at Tux to restore the garden when Amanda leaves. She subsequently prepares to divorce her husband, and leaves Dawson a voicemail declaring her love. Before anything else can happen between them, Dawson is assaulted and nearly killed by his siblings, as well as nearly put in front of a moving train. Dawson knocks out his brothers, but after dialing 911, his father spots him across the railroad lines and shoots him. Meanwhile, Amanda's kid gets in a car accident and needs a heart transplant from a donor. Amanda's mother sobs as she tells her about Dawson's unexpected death, and she is heartbroken. A year later, Jared calls her from college, saying that since it has been a year since the accident, he has learned the identity of his donor, and wonders if Amanda knew him. Dawson. Amanda says that she did and starts to cry happily. Later she drives back to the house Tuck had left them. It is there that she reads the letter Dawson had left her, telling her how much he loved her. She proceeds to take a walk through the garden Dawson had beautifully arranged for her before he died. In the movie, there is an alternative ending in which Amanda divorces her husband, as her son leaves for college, and returns to her job. While there, Dawson gives her a surprise visit, and she and Dawson get together and enjoy walking through Tuck's garden, as she takes the rest of the day off. As the closing credits appear, the two continue to live happily ever after.